You know, maybe it's a good way to... Maybe it's a good thing that I should, like, grab my microphone. Maybe that will help the stream call a bit. A bit. As once again, my camera has died. Yes. Things you love to see. Anyways, here. I am currently getting ready for qualifying. We should be started any... We should Actually, we already started, so that's nice. Let me just double check everything and then make sure that things are, you know, don't as they properly are. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a hectic stream. Wasn't able to set up things in the way that I wanted them to. Uh, but it is what it is. But I think we should be getting ready to go here. Putting on the in-game sound as well. And uh, let's head right into it, shall we? Welcome, everyone. We're at the Red Bull Ring doing a track car. Okay. At least I've got things under control now, but things didn't go as smoothly as I wanted them to. We are currently seeing the uh, GT2s out on track first. So, uh, see how that goes here. My co-commentator is on his way. He's just trying to fix his game at the moment because there were some startup issues with us. But manage here. That is a complete disconnect for my entire everything, I suppose. Ah, there we are again. Okay, interesting. Um, <laughs> looked like I had uh, been disconnected there for a minute, but at least we are back here. And uh, G those GT2s obviously should be pretty rapid around here on the uh, Red Bull Ring. Located in Spielberg, Austria. But I don't think I have to tell you guys anything about that because I think you all already know by now. One of my co-commentator is here. Uh... Yeah, he's gonna join us as soon as possible, but as for now, just gonna have to see him wait. And now, I guess we'll handle the stream on our own, at least for now. So, uh, nothing major coming out just yet. I think we'll absolutely be fine here. We've still got the same amount of GT2s out there on the grid as we usually do. Let's see if Samuel Mabugwa is able to get a uh, better result in this time. That's what we're all hoping for, at least here. It doesn't seem like his livery is loaded up properly. So between the race and the qualifying, and we got, uh, between the qualifying and the race, I'm going to try and fix that too. And then meanwhile, welcome everybody. Hope you guys are all doing great. Welcome to Masabochi. Hope you're doing great. Uh, deliveries will be fixed. Apologies for that. Especially uh, to my fellow African brother Samuel Mbugua, because he was the one that uh, we could not see before. Because I I did see that he updated one uh, or uploaded a new one even. So it would only be fair if we got to see that in game, because I'm pretty sure it's a piece of art or art on its own. I really enjoyed the way it looked, and uh, yeah, you know, I think it deserves all the recognition as well. Now, I did just see that these logos are perhaps a tiny bit small, so I'm going to try and make them a little bit bigger so we can get our promotion in. There we go. Got that fixed. See, we're improving the stream as we go, okay? We'll be okay. Waiting for my co-commentator to join back, and uh, then we'll uh, see how things go, I suppose. So, this is going to be a little bit easier when I've got my co-commentator with me, and uh, things should only just be a couple seconds until... Uh, he is back. He's restarting his PC as we speak. Um, but yeah, it's not the best of PCs he's got. So therefore, we uh, have to just be patient when it comes to that. But anyways, we've got all 10 GT2 cars out there on the grid right now. A couple of them have set in their laps already. A couple are still waiting on their first lap time here. We're currently aboard with Chris Tether. He took the Maserati GT2 out for a spin the other day and... The last race he managed to finish P4, so let's see if this time he can build on that momentum here. He is the uh, driver in the number two car, as per usual. And also the only Maserati we've got on the grid. So the majority of the drivers have gone for the KTM crossbow. That being the current top two, so Dominic Gies and Shimon Kowalski. As well as a couple others here. For example, I did see Moritz Riddebusch as well as Samuel Mabugua. So it turns out that when you use the... Uh, KTM crossbow, you're either going to do really well or you're going to do really poorly because it's currently the best two and the last two on the standings that are driving in the uh, KTM. Which I believe is an Austrian car as well, so we can consider it their home race as well. We're going to keep an eye out on all of those uh, KTMs here, see if they're going to be better 
or uh, worse around Spielberg. I expect them to be a little bit quicker than the GT3s, at least in terms of the straights. Um, if they're actually going to come close in terms of lap times, we saw on the car as well how uh, the lack of downforce really is a uh, you know a big hindrance for the GT2 cars in itself. So I expected them to be kind of of similar lap times, but turns out they're a little bit slower now on this track, obviously. It features quite a few uh, inclines and declines, interestingly enough. And we've also got quite a few turns in this track. Uh, there's actually only 10. However, keep in mind as well is that the uh, straights that we have aren't the longest here. We've got one um, really big straight though after this start uh, finish straight. So when you come around that corner, that's where I think we'll see the GT2s really making up a lot of ground. Uh, and then we've got another one and then afterwards after that it's mainly gonna be turns so therefore I do expect them to be uh, a little bit slower than the GT3s at least in that uh, part of the circuit so in the end we're just gonna see what it comes down so obviously there's very little to go very little information to find on the GT2 class itself at the moment so uh, we'll see how things uh, end up along the way just hope we're going to see a competitive GT2 field out here today here as Chris Terry has gone third fastest here. So the Brit already improving his lap times quite a bit here. Now we're aboard with Shema Kowalski. He is currently stood second in the championship. And he's chosen the Audi R8 LMS GT2 just like uh, John Dudley has. I believe the DMD Rosso is in a uh, Audi as well this season. So he's one of the new lads to the league as well. So curious to see how where they are going to end up. Uh, in terms of positioning, because at the moment there's, well, you know, very little information for, uh, for me to go off, both on the car and on the driver, so therefore I'm uh, very excited to see how that one goes down here. And obviously it is uh, not the most uh, filled track at the moment, that's because the uh, GT3s all get out at once, at least as to what we did in the last race, and people seem to have been enjoying that, whereas for the uh, second race, which is this one, uh, I think that has been untouched, but I could be mistaken as well. I notice as well, we see that we've got some uh, su success penalties that will be uh, added onto the total track time or served at their first pit stop, which is, well, the most likely approach. Uh, and those in this class come to Dominic Gies with a 15 second uh, time penalty. And then we've got uh, Shema Kowalski with a 10 second penalty and John Dudley with a 5 second penalty. Uh, those are obviously awarded to the number 1, 2 and 3 in their split going off the most recent, uh, recent race results. So which also means they don't carry over. If you miss a race after getting a podium then well you've just missed your opportunity to get points and therefore I think you've been punished enough. So I think that makes a lot of sense. We're currently watching Dominic Gies. He's yet to sit in a time lap. One of the few drivers that actually hasn't so far so it's been a little bit tougher than he perhaps would have anticipated for but he's currently doing lap times around the 135 mark which would be putting him in second to last there between Mbugua and Ridderbush as well so it's fair to say he won't be very keen on that and I actually hold him to quite a high standard as well so don't know exactly what the results for him will be but yeah, it is what it is, and um, we'll see where everybody ends up. Now, qualifying is almost over for the GT2s already here. That also gives me some time to just talk you through what we've got coming up next here. Today we have a uh, another 75-minute race for us. So that being one hour and 15 minutes with one mandatory pit stop for fuel only. You are totally okay uh, to take extra if you want. You can take tires. Uh, I wouldn't be expecting too many uh, tire swaps here, as I believe this track isn't too tough on the tires. But I could be mistaken, of course, so... I guess only time will tell. And then also I've got the track records here. I've actually only written down the uh, track records here of the total one, so that being Formula 1 in this case, uh, DTM and GT3, but the GT3s aren't too active here anymore. So therefore maybe it's a little bit uh, unfair to go off here. And Dominic Gies puts it in fourth position. We were aboard with him for quite a while there. I was trying to see what was going to happen to his lap times, but now we've got 20 minutes on the clock remaining. We see all the other cars coming out as well here, so 
Those drivers are going to be stopping uh, or headed back into the pits like they're supposed to. And when they are done, we are going to see a massive storm of GT3's cars out there. Who was actually the first one to get out there? I'm not even sure myself this time, but there's quite a couple of them, so... Yeah, just seeing that grid almost puts a smile on my face as well. There's going to be a lot of drivers that we need to focus on. And one name that I can already tell you is going to do great is Tom Wegman. He was very competitive in previous season. Uh, missed out on the first race, if I'm not mistaken. So, therefore, currently still stood on zero points. Uh, but he is a very competitive racer, I noticed, so... Keep an eye out for the Dutchman here. And we've got a couple which, well, you guys are all uh, familiar with, you know. Uh, let's see who I can find out here that's interesting to watch. I mean, we've got Marco Lowry. Marco Lowry obviously is known as a driver that is very, very rapid for his class. In the GT3s, he is actually one of the fastest. Now, last race, he got a little bit unfortunate with some incidents as well. Uh, so actually ended up dropping down to fourth place, which means he doesn't have a success penalty to his name. Although I truly would have believed that he would have won the race if it wasn't for that incident. Because he was bloody rapid out there tonight. Uh, sorry, last week. And I think tonight he's looking to repeat that success as well. So just building up some momentum to get off to a great start in the season. And here we have Thomas Merrifield. Thomas Merrifield is the only driver in the entire Amigos Racing League that I have beat in a competitive race. Um, I'm slower than every single one of them still. I got a little bit lucky when I did some LFM with Thomas uh, in the Renault Clio Cup in a set of Corsa, the original game that is. That's also a funny little ane anecdote about him. And here we have Michael Syme. Michael Syme is quick. He was also fourth in his class, but he is obviously in the split one. So that being the uh, faster class of the two. This time he's gone for a uh, all pink livery. That looks uh, very, very good to me. I really like the design on that. I think it's uh, very, very bright, very, very vividly. I love every single thing about the one. Here we have Adrian Hanovic. He is representing Team Year One like he was before in the BMW M4 GT3. We currently find him in the third position in the championship and also third in last race, of course. Which means that he will obviously, as always, um, be, you know, be it as a true competitor, I guess you could say. And uh, I'm also curious to see what he's going to do with that five second penalty that's going to have to serve. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult for him. And he is already put it on second position overall here, Hanovitz. Great time coming out. David Hill beats it, though. David Hill, obviously, also is a very, very competitive driver. He was actually one of the two drivers to finish ahead of uh, Adrian Hanovich. It was Elliot Watts that won the race last time round, and David Hill uh, to finish second. So the Scotsman also had a great race uh, over at Paul Ricard, and now looking to repeat that success over at the Red Bull Ring. Hey, Chris, how's it going, mate? Yeah, we've got a British top three in the um, split one and then we've got in split two we have got uh, two Italians as well as a Swiss driver but he's representing a Italian team if I'm not mistaken that being Sylvain Pastoris but it's this man once again the quickest out there so far Shaman Kowalski was the fastest in this class and Elliot Watts is already trying to beat that timer but at the moment it's looking quite competitive out there but I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, times in the GT3 would go down by still a significant margin here. So, at this point, I do believe that the GT3s are eventually going to end up uh, being the uh, faster cars. And uh, just got an update from the co-commentator as well. Big sorry, my game is still being rid of Frozen. My PC joining in just now. All right, we're going to be okay. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, I've managed to stream so far, although I do think it's kind of uh, lonely and boring out here. So it would be nice to have someone along my side to also improve the stream of the commentary a little bit too much. Uh, extra. Sorry, not too much. <laughs> don't think you can make a stream too entertaining. I don't think that's physically possible. How much I try my best, it's not going to happen. Here we have another new entry as well. We've got Raul Fraguero. 
I noticed that name. I realized I hadn't seen that one before. So the Spaniard joining the grid for the second round. Uh, being the endurance race we are running at the Red Bull Ring. And in the Porsche GT3, we're going to see where he ends up now. But with Michael Syme, uh, as well as Hanovich, and also Elliot Watts, all going faster than the GT2. As well as Marco Lorry, once again, up there in pace. I don't know how he's doing this, and that makes me wonder, is he in the wrong class? Because... This match has been so rapid overall. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he's getting promoted. Maybe he was already like a... You no. Know, driver that could have been competitive in both. Uh, either be at the back of the uh, first split or at the front of the second split. But with the improvements that he's showing and the consistency in the lap times... Uh, consistency in the lap times that he's getting out there. I wouldn't even be surprised if this lad uh, will make it into the split one. Uh, next season round and we're back for Riddebush. great to see the support as always and uh, he is out there but he is already qualified now uh, he qualified in what is currently p30 so that being the slowest of the gt2 cars unfortunately but keep in mind that the race is very long and he will still have time to uh, improve on that later on especially considering you never know what's going to happen in the first turn that's always a big surprise when it comes to online racing. Hey, Todd Brown. Hello, I was going to race today, but I had to back up last minute. Oh, that's unfortunate, mate. But uh, it is what it is. Sometimes those things just go uh, not into your favor. Sometimes things go up, and sometimes things are more important than racing. After all, it's just a hobby that we have and shared passion of all of us. But real life obviously always comes for work, sc work school, family, whatever it may be. Obviously, there's also no one forcing you to come, of course. You are more than welcome to skip a race or two. Although, obviously, the more you can race, the more fun it would be. Now, I did notice as well that if I am correct, this is also a record number of attendees we have. That being 41 at the moment. It's... Uh, a really big number and on a track like the Red Bull Ring, I think it's gonna absolutely be spectacular. Here is Jack Christie. Now Jack Christie is an interesting one to me. He's won split two before. Still finds himself raising a split uh, split two, however, didn't get promoted. And the driver that I find very hard to estimate where he's actually gonna end up, because you know he's really, really rapid, but he has been really unlucky in some of these rounds in the previous season. So therefore I don't know exactly what the is going to be for him but let's hope he can do well he's still got 12 minutes to try and set a good competitive lap in and it's currently this man that is leading right, it's matthew gamble matthew gamble was really really quick out there so far this time in the mclaren which feels really really weird to me but swapped over from the bmw m4 and now finds himself uh in a purebred british sports car and it's looking great uh, same livery as always. Uh, gone with the same 2ID style. I know it's kind of a team as well. So we see that's also uh, got to do with it. But it's always interesting to see uh, what he can then do. And now we've got a couple drivers here crossing the grid. Let's see if anybody's able to improve their time. This is Tommaso Bocci. We are currently watching him cross the line. And what's it going to be? P39 is a tough position to start in. Unfortunately, he's not going to be improving on that soon. Actually, that was an invalid lap or an out lap. So, well... A little bit annoying. But he's still got 11 minutes. So he should be good to uh, try and improve on that later on. Now what I did notice as well, lads. You guys are awesome for supporting your favorite driver in the chat. Always love to see it. Roberto Miglioli. So give me the go. P19 it is. Not bad whatsoever. Now we do see the GT2s kind of fall behind here. The quickest GT2 is currently sat in P10. Which doesn't even sound that dramatic. But then if you consider that the next fastest is in P25. And they're kind of all over the place till P34. That being Ritterbush in the last place. Ritterbush goal for today. Not finishing last. You know the goal is always to have fun. As cliche as that sounds. I know. But it's you know in the end that's what matters most. Now. The thing for me as well like. These guys are so rapid anyways. Like, I can't even comprehend, comprehend that. And you're absolutely correct. There is 
Well, very little difference here. So the fastest time is currently set by Matthew Gamble still with a 127.74. And we've got basically 32 drivers uh, all under the 130 mark as well. So with that number most likely going down, uh, going up as well. During that, I do see some other drivers uh, improving into that as well. For example, uh, we've got Alessandro Francone and I know he's a really rapid driver so I wouldn't be surprised if he at some point made it through so any small gain at the moment as Chris has pointed out in the chat as well uh, any small improvement in your lap time can also mean that you just move up five or six positions here Andrew Nanovic currently sat P6 that's where he'll stay for now I did see the number triple five is approaching so can I quickly find him no it's always so frustrating in this menu Nope, I can't find it in time. That's a shame. There's so many drivers that you sometimes just can't see the numbers. Uh, we have a really good saying for this in the Netherlands. It doesn't really work in English. There we go. It was David Hill, of course. I have a really good saying for this, basically. Uh, not able to see the trees. Uh, no, wait. Well, how do I translate this, even? I, I, I can't translate it, but <laughs> you, you just have to trust me. <laughs> I could think I I could think of it. I just don't know how to translate, and I don't want to sound like Louis Vergaal. We all know for his amazing classy English, of course. Football fans out there will know. Eight minutes on the clock. Then more and more drivers setting faster and faster laps here. Michael Simon approaching the finish line. But that was a significantly slower lap from him. So. No improvements as we wait for Matthew Gamble to once again cross the line. Looks to cross the line, but this time a 128.9. It's not going to be an improvement. Small mistakes, but that are those are also the ones costing you then. Animic once again trying to improve. Going as fast as he can over the straight, but virtually no improvement of that. So comes to a stop instead. This is the current new P3 driver. These are some names that we didn't really see before. And that's what I'm very much enjoying. It's Gianluca Rigatti. And uh, yeah, we've got Dario Sugaro as well in the mix. He didn't finish uh, top 10 in the last race as well. So seeing that just makes me very happy. It means we've got a very, very competitive split one field this time around. And on top of that, we've also got some very, very creative liveries out there, which makes me very happy. Here's Stefan Wilson. Crossing the line, hoping to be improving on his time. Well, it was slightly quicker, but unfortunately the lap got invalidated here. Now he would have pushed up one position if it wasn't for him uh, missing out, thanks to the invalid lap. So quite a shame, but there will be another opportunity. Here's Oliver Jewick. He was really rapid in last season, but this time... Might be a little bit more tricky for him to do good. And this time, it does improve his lap. But unfortunately, doesn't really move up that many positions. And he's still stuck behind that one GT2 car of Shaman Kowalski here. We see a lot of drivers here getting ready to cross the line. Uh, a lot of them at the same time as well. So it's going to be hard to catch up on all of them. In fact, I've missed them all by now. It's just so many numbers. Can't click on them all in time. At this point, I wish there was like an easier way to do here. Here is Joseph Adamar. That's a name I haven't heard in a long time, it feels like. He's finally back in Joseph. Crossing the line. And uh, unfortunately, three seconds off his best time. So no improvement coming in from him. As we wait for Alistair Wright to cross the line in the AF course, GT3. That's a delivery we all know, of course. Thanks to the endurance series that we have all been watching. At least I have. The people that watch the uh, 12 hours of Magello, by the way, let me know because I really enjoyed the race there, especially the second part of the race. The last six hours was a lot of fun with the weather conditions being very unpredictable. If not, please go watch it back after you're done watching the stream because it was such a fun one. I see a car going slowly, yes, indeed, that is. It's nothing major here. And now we have Harry Howard in the service. Well, it was a little bit late to the party. He might be starting off from the last position as a result. That will be quite a disaster for Harry Howard. One of the newest additions to 
our lineup in terms of drivers. So he's already said before he's really enjoying the stay as well. So if that's not a great invitation for every one of you to join as well, you guys are more than welcome to join the community. It's absolutely free. You can hang out with us during a special events if we have a few coming up. Or uh, you could, if you wanted to, of course, also find yourself in a position where, you know, you can join me as a commentator. That's so very much possible. So then, Pastoris improves on this lap by a significant margin and improves himself up to 18th position now. One position still behind Aaron Holloway. But split twos are looking quite rapid out there today. There's a couple drivers here in split one. For example, Stefan Wilson, as well as Dan Pickles, for example, that I want to see improving soon because they're kind of stuck at the moment. And Darren Christie, in fact, has also been struggling. I mean, he's currently still in P38. I don't even think he was late to join. But so far, just hasn't got a proper lap in. Uh, and that would kind of also mean that the uh, split one drivers are all kind of in the logical spots where they should be at least above the split two drivers and obviously it's not a clear barrier between them anyways it kind of overflows into them right because the fastest of split two drivers are kind of similar in pace to the slowest split one drivers but you have to give them one category after all you can't assign them to both so we've got a couple more drivers here getting ready to cross the line one of them being the number 123. I've yet to find out who that is, actually. I should know this. But he's not on my cheat sheet, so that's probably where it went wrong for me. It's also just all the numbers. There are just so many at the same time. It's ridiculous. But this is Matthew Gamble, at least. The fastest driver out there, at least for now. And his 127.740 is yet to be beat. We got to get very, very close, but unfortunately couldn't. Uh, make it out in the end so he gave it a go some drivers are definitely giving him a, a run for his money as well we've got Rigatti as well as Dario Scaro all very close up in the mix here Dario Scaro about to cross the line actually and unfortunately no improvement for him here so I have to wait to see if there's anything that can be done about his so rapid timer here is Stefano Dosso see him in the background Approaching rapidly. Can he improve on his current P22? Looks like he can't. So he's just going to be stuck there at least for now. And that's David Hill once again. Being ready to cross the line here. So there's two minutes remaining of qualifying. So we're about to get racing here. And unfortunately my co-commentator is still having some issues here. So I hope that he's going to join soon. Yet to wait on an update for him here. As Christian Brusco makes a small mistake. Finds himself onto the sand. And obviously that's not where you want to be. If you were. You uh, would have been racing somewhere else instead. You could have been. On Dirt Rally. Or something along those lines. I don't actually know what the major rally game is. That most people are playing now. I know there's Dirt Rally and WRC. I know Richard Burns is also still a very popular one. But. I believe that's a true hardcore. Uh, race game as well. So therefore I haven't really bothered with it. But I believe that game is free, so maybe I might uh, try it out at some point. Although I probably would get very, very frustrated. Because I know those games are meant to be uh, technically tricky. Here is Valerio Poli. He's also done quite a few laps out there already. It's 10th lap in qualifying now, but... Currently lacking a little bit of pace here as we are onto the last minute of the qualifying session. Safe to say it was never going to be easy, of course. Here is Oliver Juwick. Proving as much as he can, but at the moment, P12. We haven't really seen much improvement from him from that position. One of his fastest laps was actually the one uh, to be staying on the board the entire time. And it was one of the earliest laps as well. And he really hasn't moved that much up or down, I feel like, uh, throughout the entire session. Which makes me think that a lot of drivers are currently at the point where they're not improving as much anymore here. I also noticed that number 137 has been standing still for quite a while.
Here we see Master Bocci as well as his teammate. Identical deliveries are nearly identical. I believe there are some small minor changes uh, to them. But I'm not entirely sure as to what is what. But qualifying is officially over now. So everybody's going to be finishing their laps or headed back into the pits like Dario Sugaro. Here we do see the number 22 uh, staying out. That being Angelo Orlando. It's always kind of been a manners thing, right? Some people will drive over the finish line and then, you know, call it quits. Others will, well, wait and then do their thing uh, from the pits instead. So those drivers are coming in. Gives us some good times to look at deliveries as well. Aren't they looking good out there? They're absolutely beautiful, especially when you put them uh, next to each other. But she as well as Regatti, they're awesome. Very, very beautiful cars here. Marco Lowry resets into the pits and... I just make Leoli is the last one out there. Is he able to improve? No, not quite. The reason I'm putting it back to this is because I noticed that one of the liveries that I really wanted to see did not uh did not synchronize properly. So what I'm quickly gonna do is run awesome sim racing again and hoping that it updates before I get to uh, you know miss the start, because that would be an absolute disaster. That was to be the case. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. It looks like the uh, created ones have been added now. I didn't see it out. Oh, there it is. The Williams. All right. So it has just been added in. Makes me think that we are getting ready to go. And I believe that should also mean that it is now loaded in properly. Well, after the solitude of the summer break, we now the so let me quickly find them. See if Mbugua's uh, livery did synchronize. Where is he on the grid though? I don't see him anymore. Has he disconnected then? No, there he is. All right, perfect. And now it has actually loaded in, so that's beautiful. Unfortunately, there aren't enough pit boxes here making it really, really awkward. But yeah, that means that we should be getting ready to go here. So as soon as they're going to swap scenes, uh, we should be fine. And my co-commentator is still having some issues. So don't know whether he's going to be joining me tonight or if not. But we'll see how things go along the way, shall we? But I am ready to go, at least. Okay, it should be any moment now until we actually head up into the race setup. I'm ready. Apologies for this, lads, but it's currently just a matter of waiting here until the server swaps over. Uh, in the meanwhile, you guys are stuck with me. Uh, type some message in the chat if you're still here. Let me know we are supporting for the race as well. I know there's a couple of Ritterbush uh, fans in the server, which always makes me very happy. And there we go. This session is about to get underway. That being five minutes to go. So, uh, yeah. One hour and 15 minutes, that will, that's what we've got. I'm seeing that the penalties are being applied just now. That means we are about to get underway. Uh, should be four and a half minutes until we get going, which is not that much. Now we're going to do a full formation lap as we usually do. And then finishing, of course, with a one hour and 15 minutes minute race so i'm gonna be here for a while but glad i am it's always a lot of fun being on these servers and uh, this time mbugua's livery has loaded in properly makes me very happy as well so that's great there 
Dominguez is the first one to be handed out a penalty, or to be awarded a penalty rather, considering that he uh, finished the last race in the first position for his class. And now he's had to deal with the consequences, which is obviously a 15 second time penalty. And it was, uh, Brusco has actually somehow gotten 30 seconds worth of penalties. I'm not entirely sure as to why that was. I didn't notice that before. Uh, makes me want to go back and look at my second monitor, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. To uh, see. Right, so where are the penalties announced? I don't see them. Nope, I think we should be fine. I oh, know. Uh, Bruce, needs. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, so that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, they just accidentally put it on 30 seconds, but it's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, because I was like, what's going on? I was pretty sure that he only had 15 seconds worth of penalty, because this time I've actually done my research and I've made cheats and everything. Whoa, I'm prepping the way I work. <laughs> I was like, wait, what's going on now? What's going on? Turns out that that is the thing uh, that went wrong. Did my camera crash? Did it? That? Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. Beautiful. Now I'm just very delayed. <laughs> Alright, yeah. No, I thought I was my camera crashed because I was just staring into my second monitor. Uh, it turns out it's not. But yeah. Uh, I don't think um, that Mau Mau is going to be back. Let's hope that he can fix his uh, PC before the next one at least. But it looks like I'll be here alone. Uh, Alex, if you're watching this, feel free to join in with me. I don't want to be here alone. I feel kind of lonely. And, uh, yeah, come on, close that. Thank you. And, uh, well, I guess I'll be handling it uh, on a solo comms, which is not what I'm used to, but it's fine. One and a half minutes until we get on the way. See some more drivers joining and leaving voice chat. Brusco, his penalty still needs clearing, so... That was to be expected. It was obviously the one that won split two last race. He did a great job of that. And, uh, yeah. So if we look at the qualifying times now, obviously I don't have those anymore, but... So the uh, GT3 lap record here is a 128.45, a 445, we've, we, which we have already beaten. DTM, not as much, but obviously the DTM cars are slightly faster due to some uh, different uh, regulations. So it's not an entirely fair comparison, but um, yeah, basically that's how it works now. So the GT DTM, uh, they're significantly faster. Um, and they're actually doing 123.5s, which we're never going to reach, ever. And the total uh, lap record is obviously uh, set in the F1 car. That being Valtteri Bottas in the uh, Mercedes AMG Formula 1 car uh, with a 102.939. We are getting ready to race. There we go. First driver's off at least. Which means that the rest is going to join sooner or later. And this is Maxi Gamble's car close as well. Obviously, we're going to line up in a. Uh, single file as we usually do. I'll have you know for the Clio Cup I only had five minutes of practice. Nah, that's just an excuse. It's just an excuse. I already did three and a half races in them, but you know, we don't talk about that. Totally was a fair square race. But I still want to point it out, you know. It's my only achievement ever in sim racing, so therefore 
think it's only fair if I also get to pat myself on the back from time to time. Well, everybody's made it off, which is already great to see. To give you an idea as well of how many drivers there are out there, there's just a lot of them at the moment. It's going to be a packed race with 42 drivers. It's basically guaranteed that we're going to have a lot of chaos and a lot of exciting battles and overtakes. So we'll see how it goes. looking at my Twitter just now, seeing if anything interesting has happened, but turns out there's nothing. So I've on some uh, racing news. The only thing that I did see is that Garage 59 uh, is shutting down their Twitter completely and switching over to Instagram only, which is quite a shame. And something that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It feels like such a weird decision. Like, why not just both? It's, it's very little effort. You could just repost whatever you do on Twitter onto Instagram or the other way around. And nobody would ever complain, right? Let's go. Good luck. Oh, yeah, Clive Bixby. Indeed. Good luck to all. It's a shame you're not on the server. This island spot you yet. But I did see Oliver Dewig as well. So that's at least a good sign here. As we are once again lining up into double files. Which means we are about to get ready to race here. It's Matthew Gamble starting off on pole position. And we've got Rigatti and Sugar right behind. Looking to perhaps snatch away position or two. And there we go. It's green lights. Away we go, and it looks like Matthew Gamble has a better start than we got in there for. Should be fine maintaining his position into turn one. There's a little bit of door touching. A couple drivers go wide, but it's nothing major. Everybody else seems to be making it fine through the corner. Here is Oliver Jewett. We are aboard with. Currently sat in P8, and he's doing a good job of holding down that position, at least for now here. And now we see some drivers swapping around here, but I think for now were no serious incidents. Apart from one driver, uh, which is Harry Howard. We see as well how the... Uh, oh, there we go. That's one player uh, facing the wrong way. But yeah, as I was saying before, if there's just so many overtakes that they couldn't really handle it too far. But the incidents are limited to a minimum here. There are a couple drivers which have fallen behind. And unfortunately, Gianluca Rigatti was one of them. And that's quite a shame as well. Oof, careful on that rejoin. Whoever that was in the BMW. That was Marco Lorry. Be careful when you do this, but Gianluca Rigatti, he's now going to find himself you know, fighting off a lot of drivers once again. At least the positive thing is that almost everybody moves up positions as a result. But it's come at the cost of a driver that was, you know, a top contender in the race. And now has to fight from all the way back to try and make something of the race. Now, there's a lot of time to do so. So that's not what I'm worried about whatsoever. But it's still a big shame to see that happen. Um... So we saw Rigatti falling down. Oliver Jewick did as well. Marco Lari falling down from P11 to last position. Never a great thing to see. And uh, looks like the dust has kind of settled now as we are all making our way through. There's a driver going very, very wide there. And a slight disconnect for me as well. I hope this stream isn't having uh, as much issues as the rest. But yeah, you can see it's kind of rubber bandy from time to time. So not everything I say is what is happening in the race. So just keep that in mind for now. It, uh, it is what it is. And, uh, well, looks like the GT2s are now finally also showing that extra power that they've got onto those larger straights. Like I mentioned before, that's exactly where you see the GT2 shine. And uh, it actually looks on my internet. It's doing quite all right. They didn't expect that. That is Thomas Merrifield facing the wrong way. It's never a great sign. He's going to have to wait for all the drivers to pass him. So he can try and rejoin. What has happened? Has he learned nothing from the practice in the Clio Cup then? I suppose not. Here is Raul Fraguero. 
Spanish driver is currently sat in P25 in his first ever race for Amigos Racing League. So he's doing a good job of that. It's a part of racing, absolutely. And obviously that's just how things go. It will never become fully clean, but it's a shame that we saw some of the rejoins not being as good as they perhaps should be. Obviously that's a little bit of a driver stand, uh, you know, driver standards thingy. Uh, but how oh well, it is part of racing if you kind of fall off thanks to incidents and incidents are bound to happen, right? And here you can just see as well that the GT3 with the slipstream is actually holding on to the position just fine. Mission Busco is still chasing down the GT2, but looks like the power difference is very, very marginal. Now we do see that slowly but surely the KTM is driving away from Brusco. Despite Brusco being fully on the throttle, uh, you now see the difference as well. But in the faster uh, parts of the track, the less twisty parts of the circuit, we are always going to see that the GT2s are going to be a little bit quicker. They've just simply got more horsepower to go off. And uh, then we see Christian Brusco is going to have a better time through the corners. Uh, considering that these cars have significantly more downforce than their GT2 counterparts. Christian Busco is the driver we are aboard with. At the moment, he seems to be doing all right chasing down uh, the lead KTM. No, actually, there's still one more driver, of course, as well. It's Szymkowski is currently the top uh, GT2 driver. We didn't really see it before. Really boost fan base is big, just want to say. Yeah, I saw that as well. It's, it's great to see always. Damn pickles here. Szymkowski's... Very, very close to him, but maybe we'll see that change whenever they make their way through the last corner because the Audi is supposed to be a little bit more quicker. You do see the distance between them increasing. Then Pickles is holding on strong. One hour and ten minutes of the race uh, left. We do see that the Dusters cannot settle now. Most of the drivers have kind of found their position here. Christian Brusco wanted to go for an overtake, but unfortunately he finds himself doing the opposite. And uh, finds himself now behind some drivers that he was in front before. For example, we now see Aaron Sparks and Chris that are both make it past. And it's going to end up losing two positions. It's never a great sign, is it? Even Di Rosso. Chasing Darren Christie. Must be scary as well. Seeing those GT2s make it out there. And in your mirror, they're just approaching with a higher straight sp uh, line speed. And... I imagine it's not a very comfortable feeling knowing that you have one behind you. In terms of lap times, it's relatively competitive. And here is Samuel Mbugua. And this time the livery did load. Now it's based off the Williams FW07. I did not know that, but it says so in the top, uh, in the bottom right. So therefore, I should just assume that that's true. Now you see as well just how little downforce they have into the turns and how much space there is for everybody else to try and overtake. Richard Christie does a good job at getting by Samuel Mbugua. The sofa has been struggling for pace here in his GT2 car so far. Neil Arch has gone into the pit early and so has Thomas Merrifield to serve their mandatory pit stops as well as potentially repair some damage that they have picked up. Obviously, Thomas Merrifield was involved in an incident earlier on. Therefore... Safe to assume that he's got some kind of damage. Apologies as well if I'm not sounding top notch here. I'm a little bit sick. Uh, quite tired as well, so. Having to broadcast this mount isn't an easy job, but I hope you guys enjoy it regardless here. Obviously, we do see some penalties being served, but. Oh, well. Not really that bigger. Thomas Merrifield is actually already going in for his second pit stop of today. Elliot Watts is serving as mandatory pit stop as well to try and end up in clean air. You see some dust as well in the background, but nothing major. Everybody's making it through the corner relatively safely. As it is currently the race still being led by Matthew Gamble as well. Harry Scaro is the driver in second place, but the gap between them is, well, I want to say massive, but it is quite significant. And as we watch Dominic Gies here on the straight, we can see that the Audi, of the sorry, the Maserati, of course, of uh, Chris Tedder is getting closer. Wanted to see if he could make a move, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And hey, Alex, how's it going, mate? Hope you're doing great. And congratulations, of course. 
true Alex fans will know what I'm talking about. If you don't know, then you're not a true fan of Alex like I am. And you should, though. The guy's a good commentator. They started going very, very wide into the Nicky Lauda curve. As once again, we have some very interesting teleports happening all over the place. Uh, yeah, welcome to the glory of... Uh, Hey, what has happened? Oi, wheel broke in the... Oh, wheel broke in the crash tray. It's now 20 degrees. To, oh, that's a tough one. That does not sound optimal at all. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be honest here. That sounds very unoptimal. And that means you're all out of, out of the race or not? You're still driving. Oh, man, that's still going, though. I respect it. I respect it. Where's Mauro? Uh, Mauro had some technical issues. Look in the commentary text channel. Um, his PC is kind of the equivalent of a hamster, you know, running in a wheel to generate electricity for his uh, motherboard. And unfortunately, uh, he had some issues uh, earlier on as well. And I told him to restart his PC because we were having some issues um, connecting base control to the server despite following the step-by-step -step tutorial that we all had to follow at some point. Oh, Matthew Gamble's gone off. He now finds himself in fifth place. There's another driver behind him also makes his way in. That's Dario Sugaro. Oh, no. That's the race leader. Yeah, but no, he had some uh, technical issues. Therefore, won't be joining me today. It's quite a shame, but pretty sure he's still out there watching. And uh, his PC crashed a couple times and that kind of stuff. Uh, do you need help? Can I please help in if needed? Well, if you're happy to join me on the console, free to. I mean... Better to have a standing commentator than have no secondary commentator, right? So, it would be fun if you want to. Uh, and as for the uh, supporting uh, Mao, yeah, I don't know what the issue could potentially be. Um, he's copied the JSON file. But he just can't connect to the server. Like, he's in the server, but he doesn't show up in his race control, so... don't know uh, what that potentially could be I'm pretty sure I'm still in the voice chat anyways here as Alessandro Franco ends up losing a position was also to make his way past as well and now the other McLaren's will as well it was Christian Regatti hope now feel free to Still got an hour to go to make it the big uh, Ricky and Alex uh, podcast. Does he have the same port number? Should have. I think I checked it, but now I'm not entirely sure anymore. Uh, what even is the port number, to be fair? I've kind of forgotten as well. But I think we changed that, or at least it was set to default properly here. Christian Brusco not happy flashing his lights at the KTM. KTM obviously being quicker on the straights, but slower through the corners. So it's going to be an interesting one to try and avoid them. Uh, they can help you as well, but most of the time you're just going to be stuck by them. We did see a couple moves happen uh, where the GT2 or, or other back markers for that matter were kind of in a way. They have played quite a big factor, but that's just how racing is. And with the GT2s, that's supposed to be happening more. But I must say that the GT2s... They're currently out there and they're being relatively competitive here. I mean, Shevok is still holding on in 10th place. And then we have all the other drivers uh, kind of just stay in the midfield here between P15 and P22. Archer and Mbugua there, the one uh, behind by a little bit more here. And what I did see as well, actually not. Once again, Thomas Merrifield's back into the pits, so... Race over. I'm not entirely sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. It happens, it happens. As uh, Sylvain Pastores loses a position here to Dan Pickles, so once again, he's moved up one position. And uh, Sylvain Pastores now also needs to be careful because there are a couple drivers right around him, which, well, could potentially spell danger for him. 
got Darius Sugaro in that mix as well. I believe that's Oliver Jewick, if I'm not mistaken. But Oliver Jewick um, is interesting because is he on the lap down then? Yes, indeed he is. All right, that's uh, that also explains maybe why we saw some flashing lights earlier. Adrian Hanovic goes a little bit too wide. Able to recover it quite well, though. So, uh, nothing major happening there as of yet. There's Aaron Holloway. Driver you guys might all know from this league or perhaps from Supercharged Motorsport as well. Been doing both. Been a bit more active in the uh, other leagues, so not this one. Uh, that was mainly thanks to, I believe it was... You know, him being an admin there, if I'm not mistaken. And actually, he does the weekly reports as well, which is kind of funny because last week he did really well and scored, I believe it was the first podium. And then he said he basically had to write about himself getting a podium, which is kind of funny to me. Christian Brusco, he really wants to get past that KTM here, but he has to leave space as well. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen one more time because he's just going to be past from straight as Oliver Jewick once again is struggling for grip here. And, well, we've already got one DNF as well. And, unfortunately, is more it's uh, Ritterbush. But what you want to see is the harsh reality we are currently facing here. And I've just noticed as well that Alex has just been creeping, sitting here in the channel without saying a single word. Sorry, I was trying to get stuff set up. Good evening. You know, I, I was like, hmm, what's going on there? It's, it's <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Wait, well, has he been here for a long time? Has he just been stalking me? But it turns oh, out no. it's not the case. I've, I've been in for probably a minute. I was uh, connecting my other mic to my channel. Yeah, because I'm in Do Not Disturb, so I don't get a notification whenever somebody joins or leaves the channel. Because I'm, like, very afraid that somebody's going to, like, call me when I'm, like, mid-cast somewhere, right? So, therefore, oh, yeah, I've got no clue what's coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm always in Do Not Disturb. <laughs> like, just to make sure that I don't get any desktop notifications. But it can be very frustrating as well to miss some very crucial messages. So, usually I'll... You know, try and make sure that I, you know, read Discord as much as I possibly can. But <laughs> this time it looks like you've just somehow slipped the net because I didn't notice you before. Hey, I'm a stealth ninja. Yeah, I mean, sure, that, that's what we can call you now. Right, we could just change oh. your Discord name to Stealth Ninja. It sounds like a cool name, to be fair. There's worse. There is worse. There's worse? Like what? If you say Ricky DC, now you're banned, by the way. <laughs> No, you said that. Quite yeah. a tempting word to say, but but I'm not going to say it because I want to get banned. Oh, hang on, how can you ban? I don't even have ban problems, but I'll ask Chris very, very nicely. Pretty sure he likes me more than you, anyways. That's nah, true. Just, nah, 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 come on, man. That's a joke. What do you mean that's true? <laughs> I, I barely speak to Chris. Yeah, true, but you've still helped him out massively, no? I guess you could say that. I mean, we've been handling the broadcasts for. Wait, when did you join? Was it season 13, 14? 13, I think. I'm so like bad that. with timelines. Timelines. I'm like, I can never tell like when certain things have happened or like compared to other events when things have happened, right? I'm just very bad at it. So like, I've got no clue if you were here, for example, when I started commentating here. But then if I think about it logically, you weren't. Oh, right? no. <laughs> I, I can kind of give a reference that you joined. You joined June-ish, so we're going to say that's season 10. I believe it's 11 like, I started casting, or 12, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm just going to say, the battle at the front, these three cars, it seems the McLaren of the triple five, of, I believe it's David Hill. That's how David right. Hill, yes, indeed. It is. It's starting to gap himself now. I know we're only, I think it's 10 minutes into this race, but however, we do see what seems to be Adrian and uh, Tom Wigman in very different cars you could say still quite even in pace but they're definitely going to be fighting for at least into the pit window to say the least yeah well um just to correct you as well this is a 75 minute race so roughly 20 enough. minutes yeah it's a new thing i i was a little bit confused as well what as to why we were doing 65 and 75 minute races but like it in 10 minutes makes the fuel a bit -ish, uh, more i don't know weird because like <laughs> I don't know enough about, like, racing or this game in general to really talk about it, you know? <laughs> don't 
quote me on this anyone, but I believe 75 minutes is a bit more interesting because I believe the fuel tanks can only last. I f well, apart from the Ferrari, that front car can go for years. But most cars can only go 70 to 80 minutes, I believe. And so I think it makes it a bit interesting. And the, the Ferrari is kind of like a Citroen C1 at that point, where you could just drive for ages and the fuel just never ends. Sounds like one as well. Is it generating fuel as it's burning some? That could exactly. be logical. <laughs> That's a logical explanation. It's like a, it's like a hybrid, you know? It's it's so solar panels on the roof or something, you know? It could work. That would make it very heavy, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, but there's still firsts in some races. Yeah, true, true, true. I mean, I've only... makes me wish as well that we see the other Ferrari out there on track sometimes. We saw a couple of them during the special events, and I think they're both, both pretty dope, but too bad we only get to see one of them, really. The 296 is, like, way more popular than the other one. Is it the 396? What is it? 388? I'm so bad at... 488. I'm so bad with Ferrari models, dude. I, I, I feel like even if I were to actively study them, I would just forgot again. Like, it's just... I can't do them. I can't do them at all. Oh, no. Morris Friedrich is still here. He's just pushed up the field so much that I didn't notice him. But who's gone then? We've lost one driver in the process, but I'm trying to figure out who it is, but... Still got no clue. And you must definitely don't either, because you... I mean, maybe you... have just been, like, analyzing the stream, but... I guess not. I'm trying to I go off all the names, but... I got back in my house five minutes ago, so I am still just trying to log into a few software. So I'll, I'll probably be at peak in about five minutes when my brain's warmed up. But. I'm gonna set a timer to Alex's peak. Oh, um, <laughs> my peak was two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, wait, what happened five or two weeks ago? I don't know if I can say yet. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, you're showing Sky Sports F1 as a Formula One commentator announced uh, soon. I I think I can tell you off the stream, but I don't think I'm allowed to announce it publicly. You know, you shouldn't tell me stream. now because I'll get really excited and then we just accidentally leak it. So wait until after the stream. Oh, yeah. Just, just, just end it on the cliffhanger at that point, right? Be the NDA. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I've actually had to sign one of those recently for a school project. It's kind of weird. But... A school project? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess you are over the age of it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're doing a data science kind of thing. Was it an affiliation with a company or something that needs... Yeah, medical. I, I see, yeah, that would be it. I say recently, but it's like half a year ago, but still. <laughs> That's a reason in my head. <laughs> still recent. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, people from, like, 2008 or 16 years old now, which still boggles me. 15. Yeah, but it depends on if you've had your birthday yet. Oh, yeah, true, but I'm going for my age, so... Yeah, yeah, but c come on, don't say that, man. I'm <laughs> fucking old. Jesus. Do uh, you love to swear on this stream? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we are. Chris has never said yeah. anything about it, so... Therefore, I'll I know assume we're it's allowed fine. To, um, I, I know we're allowed to on Calm's stream, but I just tend not to, because I think I'll go in the habit and start doing it on, like, FRL and stuff I, I, like that. Um, and that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I can handle it because I treat those these streams like a little bit more casually. Hmm. Yeah. Therefore, I think it's gonna be. This is an interesting battle, though. We've got two GT2s in the mix, as well as two GT3 cars. But a lot of the drivers here are from the same team as well, so can they work together to try and clutch things out? A little bit of a bump draw coming in. Although I don't know whether that was intentional or not. But Aaron Christie getting a little bit of speed boost as a result. Trying now, to hold on to John Dudley, but. GT2 is just is, so much quicker. Yeah, this is the thing when it comes to multi-class racing, and especially in two quite similar paced cars, you could say. You do see both Christie's get a bit of a nudge from that Mercedes. They have very similar pace in terms of lap times, but obviously there's the advantages and disadvantages of these cars, uh, both from high-end speed from the GT2s to corner speeds. Uh, from the GT3s, which makes it a lot more interesting, as we can see from these four drivers that are in two completely different classes, where we can see this Mercedes now from both Christie's is being able to fly past, uh, as we nearly see him side swap there, Darren Christie going past Mercedes GT2 of Aaron Sparks once again. But now he's, he's going to have the advantage once again. If he can stay close enough 
to these McLaren GT3s, he can easily just get past them uh, within these straights before, we, well, you could say before the end of turn one. Yeah, no, that's definitely one thing that I noticed as well, right? You just lose so much time in the last sector compared to the GT3s here. And now, sure, you're able to catch up with these, but, like, what's the point of overtaking? Because by the time that you've kind of had your two long straights, so that being the start-finish straight as well as the one after, by the point that you kind of find yourself in a position where, you know, you're finally with them again, they're just going to have the advantage again because then you immediately get into a sector where you have to do a lot more turning in. And you saw it as well. Uh, I believe it was turn six and seven where you definitely noticed Aaron Sparks was just losing so much time compared to the GTVs out there. That's all thanks to the lack of downforce, really. Uh, so, yeah, honestly, I do think this would definitely be a track where they are going to be relatively competitive. Right? Cause for example, at Paul Ricard, I thought they were going to be, you know, just about as quick, if not quicker. But you know, I guess I really underestimated how little time they made back on the long stray, which was very weird to say. Uh, again, I shouldn't. Uh, I need to stop trying to quote myself with statistics. I'm not sure if your mic just went there. My boy heard snorts. Aaron uh, Sparks going very wide. Did your mic just go? Oh, no, you're back. There we go. No, I'm, I'm no back. I'm, I just sometimes tend to not talk loudly enough so my Discord will say, like, hey, no, that's just background noise. <laughs> you're not fair. Oh, I have seen there's quite a few penalties already being applied. I assume they're success penalties from the last race. Yeah, they, they, they are. And also, it, it just looks like it's a lot more because now, uh, last time we had one split per uh, uh, per server, right? And now mm. we've got three on one. So the amount of success penalties yeah. we have is going to be nine. Which makes me think that maybe that is also soon to be revamped in some sort of way. Like, I can imagine we're going back to... For example, two success penalties for the top two or something along those lines. Or just make them like a little bit less significant, because now it's just going to be absolute chaos uh, um, everywhere in the one, fields. One thing I will say with having one server is I would love to be commentating in it. I hate to be driving in it, because today there's not as many cars. There's 40 cars. It's still a lot. But from last season, I think uh, Simgrid is at about 75 uh, obviously, that was split between two servers that me and Rick both commentated on. Uh, I was on the slower server, I believe. And yeah, then you were. Rick, when he was a case. Were you there for the entire season? I, w I wasn't there for the entire season. I, so I, I, I wasn't continue. there either, but it's mainly just like, you know, the, the way that I've kind of set it up here with Chris is that I, I do this whenever I don't have... Oh, Aaron Sparks going very wide in the uh, same corner twice in a row. So not looking too great out there. At the moment here, we expect better from him and hope he has some time to uh, recover that as well. But no, as I was saying, um, so the main thing, like how it works, basically I just see if I have a paid over coming in for CS, because I barely get paid overs for sim racing at the moment. Because I don't mm. do it as actively as you do, for example. So when I don't have any offers coming in, I'll hop on the mic here. Um, which means that, well, when it's active season, I barely have time to do anything else. I'm just working six days, seven days a week. Which means there's very little time to go over. Once again, Aaron Sparks struggling for grip. Making his way through the last corner. Yeah, he's uh, not been having a great time so far in the Mercedes. And I wonder what that's come down to. Aaron Sparks is our driver. I don't know that well. Uh, I know you know him a lot better. I hope you know him better if he's your get on the car with him. <laughs> for an hour and a half or however long it is. I don't know how far yeah. it is actually from uh, Stapleford to Dunny, but it can't be that far, right? I think I've looked it up. Oh, I think it's yeah. like, wait, now I'm actually, wait, I'm Googling it. You look up that. Well, we do see the 51 McLaren of uh, Lioli uh, and Darren Christie, both McLarens again. Well, it seems there's a McLaren sandwich here, three McLarens trying to go out once and once again, but they all are quite similar times here. Around two tenths of each other, as we do see Darren Christie getting very wide going through turn three slash four there because i don't know if you want to count uh the strip that weird turn on the straight at the corner i know f1 does but i don't think gt does so i think uh, it's all down i've downloaded a uh, track map and it does actually note it down as a turn is it a gt track map it's the same layout as i was able to find i just went to the first picture on wikipedia and the layout looks the exact same so okay i assume <laughs> it's turn four then <laughs> Yeah, I mean, wait, which one are you referring to? The downhill turn, like, to the right? Yeah, I think it's... Oh, I forgot what it's called. Shoshkult. Yeah, I would have never got that. 
Yeah, no, I just looked it up as well. Uh, Stapleford to Castle Donington is going to take 20 minutes, roughly. Okay, it's not as bad as I exaggerate. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I specifically had to look at a place where it was, like, cheap to go. But it was also, like, you know, within, you know, somewhere mm. in the area of the circuit. It was kind of tricky out there as well, because public transit just sucks in the East Midlands for whatever reason. Uh, it's because no one really lives there, I'll be honest. <laughs> Are you just disregarding the entire city of Birmingham? And oh no, that is Aaron Holloway getting himself involved in an incident. What if I believe that's Alexander Franco? Oh no, that was a big one as well. And yeah, as soon as I start talking about Birmingham, everything goes to shit. Who would have thought? Oh, what a shocker. <laughs> I mean, I'm flying into Birmingham. I hope I make it out, so. <laughs> I'll be surprised if you actually make it in. <laughs> Hey, what's gonna happen? Is my plane just gonna crash? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's either that or you go to Cardiff, so it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much you've dissed uh, Wales, I'm not sure they'll like you either. I mean, I've been relatively nice about every single place in the world, apart from maybe Birmingham. Wales. Oh, yeah, and Wales. But. Uh, probably other places. No, nah, I don't actually think so that much. I tend to be kind of nice especially considering that you know i live in a big shit all myself so nice what you don't consider me nice <laughs> the first word you said to me when i first met you is really you're putting me on uh, the mic of a welsh person that's very true but that was for <laughs> comedic purposes and it was to help us bond there was nothing else that i meant with that message but I'll, ever I'll, since then you've been scarred for life <laughs> I see how it is, I see how it is. And I, I don't was going to put that as my Twitter profile picture. <laughs> Wait, like the... Uh... My, this is my banner, like I see you oh. do it with her. Uh... Oh yeah. <laughs> so it, feels, it would have been quite funny that. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's only on my personal account. I'm not there to do it in my work account because I'm separated now. Which mm. is... It's kind of been a, a move that I maybe shouldn't have done. But then again, I also kind of like to go on political rants from time to time or just put an unserious yeah. <laughs> tweet out. So <laughs> it's for the better. <laughs> Because I don't want to get cancelled. Uh, yeah, so but uh, currently yeah. my... Uh, have you seen what my banner reads, by the way? Uh, do you want me to check to it? Nah, I mean, I can read it out to you. It says, Life's beautiful, God is good, and Ricky's sexy. And I live by that quote Lovely. day to day. <laughs> I live by that quote day to day. That is a mega quote. Did you pay you to do that? Did you pay for that? No, no. <laughs> I didn't pay anyone. <laughs> That's my Is former that social weird? media manager, by the way. He was also the guy in charge of HR, so it was kind of a weird situation. You but... have a, you had a PR, did you? No, like I was in an esports organization for a long while uh, as a content creator, and I was just helping out behind the scenes as well. Then I kind of swapped cool. to helping. And then I kind of switched over to only casting them, and then, you know, also yeah. helping a little bit behind the scenes, but not that much anymore. And by the time he was the, the social media manager that we had and he made all the posts and if you look at my announcement video for example it's hilarious like they're so well made they're like the high, highest quality shit posts you'll ever see <laughs> and every single that post he's made they're like small pieces of art like I kid you not have you ever been to like a really fancy restaurant yeah I'm a so out of place there yeah so that's exactly why I felt when he was handling the social media it's like yeah. Why is everything so good here? I don't deserve this. That was kind of the feeling that I had with it. I'll be honest, a lot of my tweet formats I've stolen from Pitsko. Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> Explain. So, basically, uh, you might have seen them. Uh, when I say I'm going live today and stuff, Yeah. yeah. all of the formats like that, I completely nabbed from Terry from Pitsko. Sorry, Terry. <laughs> He's definitely watching this. To be honest, he might be. Hmm, I don't, I don't think he is. He liked my tweet earlier. He, he did? Sure. Oh, that's good though. I mean, he didn't tweet about this one, I assume. Well, we'll find out in the next 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, if you're fired from the other league you're doing. <laughs> yeah. That's good, God. That's good, God. That would be sh a shame though. But yeah. I really enjoyed the uh, Pitskill streams though. They're coming back they're great background like you know what i always do like every time there's like a esports match or like a race somewhere mm. whether it's virtual or real i just put it up as like 
Do you know how some people turn on the TV just so it's not silent in the room? Oh, yes. Yeah, That's I what that. I do with I these do streams. That. I did it with the 12 hours from Magello as well. It was a, it was a fun race, so I actually ended up getting was, really invested into it. I, I watched about half an hour of it and then I had to go. It was a good race, though, yeah. to be fair. Especially the second part. He crashed again. Oh, there was quite a few crashes, but there was a... Is one of the golfs or was it? No, I'm thinking of a different race series. Yeah, no, Never that's not, not not the golfs for sure. The 24 hour series is only GT Freeze and wait, it's only no, it's uh, GT Freeze, 992s, golf, Porsche man. Cups, GT Fours, and the GTXs, which is basically just the Vortex and the other car that I forgot about. Mm. Is it an Amara Cup? It might be a Lamara Cup. I'm not entirely sure. You know what would be quite cool now if it just rained for the rest of the race? Well, it won't rain for another 15 minutes, that's for sure. Oh, I don't like how it's changed that. Why it's so... That, is that a new up? I haven't been on... I've been F1 for most of this month. No, I don't think it's... I think it's been there for quite a while. It's always been half an hour. Unless it's service settings, which it probably is. It, it probably is service settings, to be fair. <laughs> but I think that I this makes more that. sense, though, in the kind of race format that we're doing. Hmm. But I think this race, looking at the sky, I think you'll be fine with it. Yeah, I mean, most definitely, right? But, you know, you never know. Maybe some people don't know how to look up at the sky. You're assuming they have next. They might not. Yeah. By the way, speaking about next, did you see the uh, tweet that I did like a couple hours ago? I uh, mm. I installed the. Do you know uh, neck effects in uh, Assetto oh, Corsa? I, I did see that. I'm sorry, I forgot to like it. I you forgot? Yeah, that. you did forget to like it. Actually, I feel offended now. Sorry. Uh, hey, watch this now. Watch this. <laughs> watch this now. I'm refreshing the feed as we go. I, I'm a what up it. Ooh, Manuel Laparati. It. It was a little bit too wide. Able to rejoin safely. Then. Sorry? Is that you racing? Yeah, we don't talk about it. It's the Porsche Cup, okay? It, no. no it's, it's really good. No, it's not. <laughs> I could have definitely pushed it harder, but I was like so scared that I was going to make a video for Twitter and I crashed, you know? Because I didn't want to do like. I, I was on the endurance uh, layout, so I didn't want to like drive the entire track again. Just, I love the noise pressure. Yeah, don't we all? Like, uh, no, it's not anymore after April 1st, I don't think. <laughs> well, you're planning to participate in any race, or is it on the calendar anywhere else yet? So, this is the interesting part, because FRL, obviously, you might... I'm not sure... If, are you commentating in FRL 24 hours in Nords? Uh, I, was, I wasn't even aware of that being a thing, so most likely yeah. not. That's, that's a shame, actually. <laughs> that would be quite good to see that, Uh... They're doing a 24 hours of Nords in July. But I became quite good friends with Jamie, one of the F1 admins. Uh, and we recently did a 2.4 hour uh, at this track, in fact, on Thursday. And our pace difference was quite different because I got up to, a, I think it was about P10 and he was struggling to stay on track. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a big difference. But we're looking to make the scuffed commentary car. So if you Ooh. want to join it, come for it. You know, trusting me in a car is like trusting a monkey with a gun. You probably shouldn't, but it would be hilarious. Have you seen the livery rerun? Oh, you probably haven't actually. No, oh, I haven't. You, have you need to send that up to me. It's just a Pepe emote livery. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Pepe is just a way of expressing yourself. It's a form of art. That's what it is. The next NFT. It probably is already an NFT. We could, I mean, we could make it an NFT if it isn't already. We could become rich. We just rich. make an NFT. <laughs> the Amigos Racing League NFT. It has to have Aaron, uh, Aaron Holloway's face in it. Well, his profile picture. I, I was suggesting Aaron Sparks' face, but I don't oh, even that. know if I. I don't even know if I know what he looks like, which is kind of weird considering I'm stepping into the back of his car. <laughs> I think we need to be careful with him though, because uh, he is once me like an ex-police officer. But is he? I, I think know. he is the next police deputy or something. Like I, I don't like... know. I, I didn't know that he recently applied for a new job or like went on an interview for it. 
but that's the last time they've got of him. I knew that he uh, worked with children that are like... I don't know how, how the official, what the official words for it are, but like... There is like... Social work? Yeah, I think that's what you call it, right? Like somebody... He was like working with children that are like very hard to like deal with, I suppose, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Like, I I'm struggling to put it into words, but... Yeah, no, no. But, like, uh, they have, like, uh, you know, uh, behavioral problems yeah, and, like... Yeah, so, so sure. Yeah, if that's the word for it, then... I don't know why I didn't know that word, because I feel like it might just be the same thing in Dutch, but... Ah, well. Well, I think Dutch is probably worker social, then, yeah. I mean, considering how many times we do swap words around in an, in an annoying fashion, I wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. Now, I did notice as well that Andrew Orlando has gotten himself his uh, 30 second stop and go penalty, which is a really rough penalty to be handing out. But I think that was related to the incident we saw before, a little bit earlier in the stream. Like, no, I while think ago. he's, dis uh, he's uh, completely retired from the session because he's been in the pits for a good solid seven laps now. So I assume he has... Oh, he... I can't tell, actually. His jack keeps going Wait. up and down. No, he's in pits. He's he's yeah. retired from the race. Yo, yeah, I see it now. But the weird part is that it didn't update for me, which was very weird. Hmm. Andrea Orlando is still in P23, according to the screen. But when I click on P23, it's the Rosso. However, another driver who is on... Fire tonight is Aaron Sparks in the Mercedes AMG GT2 Evo going against what seems to be Jay Wilson in the 272 BMW M4. So again, two different classes, and this is where we do see Sector 3 is more of the redemption of that GT3 compared to Aaron Sparks's GT2. But going through now, what seems to be the end parts uh, of Sector 3, Sector 1, especially in a bit of Sector 2, it's going to be all of Aaron Sparks's. Uh, game, but we do see he goes into the pits to serve his mandatory pit stop for tyres, I believe it is, and potentially a bit of fuel. Yeah, no, I mean, the the interesting part as well, right? Um, I feel like that would have been a really good comparison for us to have, like, as a standard, as like how long is like how how much time do you actually lose or gain uh, on these longer straights, right? And now, unfortunately, mm. they both head into the pits, so we've still got no reference point as of yet, but. You no, know, you do notice that. I think the difference is a little bit underwhelming. Uh, I thought that the difference would be bigger than it actually is. It, 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 yeah, we are kind of exaggerating like it's DRS. But it is, with the slipstream, it is very powerful. But with dirty air and other equations like that, it, it's not as good as we think it is as we do see now Joe Wilson comes out of the pit and we do see Aaron Holloway comes off not Holloway Aaron Sparks does come off the jack so there's still quite a big gap between them both can Aaron Sparks catch it up going into the end of sector one and sector two where it's primarily straight and this is where we really see what the difference is between the cars but the difference has gotten way bigger so Looks like the BMW is on a very different strategy compared to the American in the AM Mercedes AMG. Because uh, now actually he's the one uh, under pressure here from the uh, Audi behind, which is uh, Iroso. And he was the one that was into the pit with him a little bit earlier, but he was in the pit for a very, very long time then. So in the Aaron Sparks, well, he already had a slower pit compared to the BMW, but Iroso was already standing there for... I wouldn't even be surprised if it was a full minute. He has been there for very, very long, and I wonder what the reason for that was. I'm not sure. I'm assuming it could have been done something with another bug that is slowly starting to work here at ATC, as we have seen quite a few uh, that are starting to pop up. But we do see, hopefully coming with the new Noid for Life uh, uh, update comes with a bunch of hot patches to fix all of these bugs that we have seen, especially with driver swaps I've seen. Uh, it's just very buggy at the moment and it's quite unreliable and I believe there's only about two actual games as we do see Aaron Sparks now defending for his life from Di Rosso uh, in P22. But it's something I found when doing uh, a few driver swaps. Uh, it's, if you go into a pit you're 50-50% likely. It's probably more than 
50%, but it's quite likely that you will unfortunately have a bug that does occur for the other driver. To so just not be able to drive the car, it's just not handed it over to anyone, but you also don't have control of the car. And that's something we've seen uh, since the days of age of this game. And I've only been on this game since 2020, but I never played it much. I used to be a livery designer. You, uh, you but... say that. <laughs> I've only owned this game since June 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do livery designing, so that's I cool, spent though. a lot of my time on Photoshop. You know, I'm jealous because I'm so bad at like Photoshop and that kind of stuff, but I've never also like wanted to put in the energy to learn it. Like I'm complaining that I'm not as good at making liveries that other people are. But then instead of fixing the issue, I just cry about it and do something else instead. Which is probably why I'm not improving at it rapidly. Um, I actually did try and create some Counter-Strike skins once, but like it's just, I don't know. I just also lack the creative mind to kind of come up with ideas that, yeah, you know, that's kind of be cool. Car. It's kind of annoying though because I wouldn't have stopped, but my ego was drained so much because I I was I've been uh, around quite a few quite major livery designers like the uh, names of uh, Ben Brown. You might not have heard of him, but he's done quite a few of the ACC QNOS liveries. Uh, another person, from Mark Grandenbury from Positive Perception. I am not plugging anyone, trust me. Uh, he's also really good. Uh, and then Denise Pope, who's also another good livery designer, but is also the Le Mans Ultimate uh, user interface designer. So that's why that all looks quite good as well. You know a lot of cool people. That's what I noticed as well. You definitely know within like esports in terms of motorsports and sim racing, you know a lot of like cool people compared to me. I barely know. You're probably the coolest person I know when it comes to sim oh. racing and commentary. You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> no, but you're it, the best CSGO person I know because I know four people. Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take honest. that. I'll take that. If I wasn't on the podium there, I would have been real sad though. But <laughs> I do watch your Counter Strike, uh, Counter -Strike streams quite a bit. Do you understand what's going on as well though, or is it just like, ah, yeah, he shot somebody? That's as much as my game understanding goes i've been trying to learn counter-strike because i've started playing it a bit Ooh. Uh, not for any particular reason it's just because i was really bored uh i went on to stream there is so much uh, logistics into that game in start uh in terms of just planning because i i like to play a few swap games and stuff like that such as the uh games are ready or not it's really fun to play that if you have it but there's a lot of logistics in, uh, instead of just going pew pew to a person which i like to do yeah no it's definitely also like i used to be really interested in the tactical side of ones like i used to play in esports teams and that kind of stuff right i see tactical man the in-game leader that was a lot of time that, that was a lot of fun but it takes, takes so much effort as well because the amount of preparation you have to do is insane the fact where basically every single minute of my free time was dedicated to counter-strike and then i kind of realized like what am i doing i'm not making it pro anyways i'm like at the time i was 19. you're now a pro commentator so i think you got that <laughs> well that's what i'm trying to do i mean i'm starting at sandforth quite soon so in the summer oh, it is. i'm gonna watch that stream it's not gonna be streamed though it's just for trackside announce uh, announcer but still kind of sick i'm going to zandvoort hell yeah do it i mean it's only amateur <laughs> races but you're more than welcome to be there it's a cool track as well. I actually didn't know the layout for it. This is kind of embarrassing as well, but I guess I you don't have know your home track. No, no, I mean, TT Austin is my home track because it's 15 minutes away from me. No, but the funny thing is, is that I never knew the Zandford layout. I just never bothered learning it. So recently I hopped on a uh, regular set of course huh, to try and learn the track, but it's been a slippery slope with all the uh, banking and the elevation changes and such. But it's been Amazing. good fun. I definitely overlooked the track. I always thought it was boring, but since so it's actually really fun. Zamfor is a very Marmite track. That's a very UK reference. I'm not sure if you get it. No, it's not a, really. It's just. I I know you said this once. I'm not sure when you said it, but you uh, you know quite a few UK phrases, and you use them in streams. Or if that's someone else, it might be someone else. Yeah, I mean, I do refer to the British slang sometimes and that kind of stuff. So it might might have been. This one's quite a good one to use, uh, especially when it comes to track or uh, car usage. Marmite is, you know Vegemite, right? Yeah, I know what Vegemite is. It's, it's Marmite like the British version of that. Basically, but their slogan is, you either love it or you hate it. 
because it's a very controversial thing you put on toast. Uh, I feel so British right now, man. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> I personally love it. Uh, no, I, I know that's just not really relevant at all. Uh, but it's a slogan that I know a load of commentators use as well. It's a very creative way of... It's not really creative anymore. But it's, it's a very creative way of saying you either hate or love the car. And it's... Yeah, I think it's definitely something you might start using, hopefully, because it's definitely something I'll say a bit more <laughs> trying to think of Dutch products that people like either hate or love, but I'm struggling to find of something. Yeah, of, your food's I mean, it's li licorice. They're amazing. I mean, licorice, I guess. No, oh, licorice, uh, that's just a hate. I like it. <laughs> Let's be honest. I, I like yeah. the... Yeah. Not, not the actual, like, really salty ones, but, like, mm. just the normal ones. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll eat a whole package if you give it to me. Oh, really? Yeah, most I, definitely. I used to like licorice. Yeah, but okay. I just don't like anyone. Well, what do you think of the controversial thing that we do in the Netherlands? It's called Hate the Blixem, which stands for uh, Hot Thunder, I guess. And it's basically combining apples and potatoes, like mashed potatoes and apples. How does that, that make you feel? That was going to go two. That nearly went two ways there. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? Uh, don't worry about it. But okay, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll forget about it. Potatoes. But, yeah. I, I think I'll have to try it because I reckon it might bang. I don't know. I've never had it, but I know my, my current girlfriend likes it a lot. So I guess I'll try and I'll have to eat it eventually when I'm over at her place. But I don't yeah. know. It just feels so weird. Like it's just a combination that doesn't work out in my head. But maybe it's really good though. It, it's yeah. I don't know how to think about it, but it's the same with I know a load of people. There's another controversial. It's not really a British thing. It's an Irish thing. But it's crisps in a sandwich. Oh yeah, I like that. I like the salty aspect of it. Hmm, well, it depends what flavor crisps you use, obviously, yeah. but... Yeah, most definitely, but I feel like if you pick a relatively neutral flavor, you know, mm. it might work out really well. And I actually feel like maybe the spicy ones work as well. Just to... I, yeah. Oh, I want crisps, though. But I don't really eat crisps anymore. I know that sounds weird, but... I've been thinking about my diet, because I kind of realized, like... I was always, like, on the limit of, like, being underweight slash normal weight, right? Yeah. And I hopped on a scale the other day, like, a week ago. And I realized that I was now, like, now, like, over the halfway mark of a good BMI. Like, it was still well within good BMI. But it still, like, also made me very self-aware of my, like, eating habits. Because I used to eat, you know, a lot of bad foods. Because, well, you know, you're a student. You want cheap and fatty meals. And then... That kind of just Robin happens. And beans. So. Yeah, I mean, mainly dinner kebab, to be fair, but... Oh, I don't like them. To be honest. I don't know. Are there any good, like, vegetarian kebabs? Uh... Or was this, like, before you stopped eating meat? Because I don't know when you stopped, like, eating meat. So I've been very on and off, but recently... All right, story time. Okay. This is a very strange story time that I haven't actually told anyone yet. Okay, well, but, do it in front of all the people watching the stream. <laughs> exactly. Nothing bad could happen, yeah. But basically, I used to eat uh, no meat at all. So I basically completely deficited any sort of meat from my diet for about seven to eight years. And recently, I broke that. Uh, you lost yes. your meat virginity again. <laughs> 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 Okay. Go on. Uh, I ate meat, but for four, oh, not even for maybe three and a half weeks, I was really ill. Like, I was ill, ill. So I went to the doc uh, doctors. They thought I had cancer. Oh, that's right? not good. But it might also just they be your body not used to it anymore. Yes, and that's exactly what it is. I went in, they said, oh, there's a 20% chance you have stomach cancer or some sort of Ooh. digestion uh, issue. I go back, I was like, we go back for the second day, the other doctor just says, oh yeah, you just have a digestion issue because you've been off it for so long. It's like, yes, that sounds more normal. Then the third, third doctor says, uh, what's it called? You've got uh, an intolerance to, uh, it's a certain vitamin that comes from meat. So we've got three different answers. So that doctor uh, uh, takes, we have these things in the UK. Uh, it's called like a receipt. It's just, it's just kind of like a receipt, but it's kind of a card to pick a medication from a pharmacy. I went to that on well, the next day later to go in. 
uh, to get the meds, but they said you shouldn't need these. So I went back to my local hospital to find out everything's fine. So I, there's a lot. You know, glorious UK healthcare. Sounds great. And yeah, and then for another little story time that no one knows either, apart from a few people behind the scenes. Uh, three weeks before that, when I was building my PC, I had a seizure. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. What's going on with your buddy, mate? Are you all right? Mate, I don't even know anymore. I want you anymore. to survive until at least Donington. <laughs> Probably, preferably a little bit longer than that, considering you're still a young... No, oh, okay. You're, you're not a young... I, don't, I wanted to call you a young child, but that would be kind of rude, so... I feel like you're more mature okay. than I am, so maybe that wouldn't be fair to call you that. This thing can make you sound a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> that also, but I didn't even <laughs> think about the creepiness part of it yet. Oh, Farad Sparks there, going a little bit wide. Even the Rosso might be taking that spot away now. Hearing that their GT2s are relatively similar in pace, it's just a free overtake there for Dion Rosso making his way up to 17. Now well, it's down to these two cars, because these are very different cars from the GT2 category. Obviously, you have the front engine uh, Mercedes that is very good around curbs and very good uh, on top speed. But then you've got the Audi as well. Uh, that's, again, a, a mid-ish to uh, rear engine car. But it's got a high downforce, but a lower top end speed. So it's definitely something that is very even around this track uh, in terms, I think, that the Mercedes is probably a bit better off. So basically what you're saying is that the Mercedes GT2 is the GT3 of GT2s. Yeah. Okay, nice. Got it. <laughs> There's not really much to these cars, I'll be honest. There's just a bit of pace difference and a bit of an aero for. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's what I struggle with as well, because I don't know the regulations that well. Right, it's all kind of new to me, and obviously with these cars being in the game, I still find yet to find out, like, you know, what, what does what. I only know that the Porsche 9... Is it a 935? I believe it is. It's not competitive uh, at all. 935. I'll be honest, this is out my zone now. That's the, the older generation, or like the old body at least. Uh, oh, Porsche. what? The old 911? Are you talking about the 991? GT3? No, no, no. It's a GT2. It came in the new pack. There's two Porsches they added, no? That's a Porsche? Wait, I said, of course, I'm going to Google it now. I, I, I haven't raced these cars. I barely do any GT2. Okay, G GT2 packs here. Okay, so here's what, what's included, right? So you've got... Um, it would be nice if it actually showed... Okay, so you've got the KTM. You've got the Porsche 911 GT2 RS Club Sport Evo, which is well, not as competitive as the KTM, the Maserati, the Mercedes, and the Audi, but competitive enough. And you've also got the uh, Porsche 935, which is, well, what I was told, is like a really fun car to drive, but just in no way competitive. So I wouldn't even be surprised if at some point we might be seeing um, somebody do like a one-off race in the 935s, because they look absolutely amazing. They're using like the old Porsche like shells for them. Mm. And they look amazing, and I bet they sound amazing too. I've yet to hear what they actually sound like, because I haven't actually seen one on track, and considering I don't own the DLC... Wait, I do own the DLC, otherwise I wouldn't be spectating, right? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> well, I do own the DLC, I just haven't raced in it yet, but I think that might be fun as well. Off, Sorry? I can do a bit of driving after if you want. Uh, well, I probably should head to bed immediately after the stream, considering that, you know... <laughs> oh, I keep, I keep forgetting you're an hour ahead. Yeah, not, yeah, not even that. It's also that my alarm goes at 6. And I don't... Like, it's kind of tough because I live, like, more than an hour away from uni, so... Oh, that's also rough. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, 40 minutes by train. Then I have to walk, like, 15 minutes to uni, but getting to the train station also takes, well, 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the way that I'm, like, going, so... I live in a very odd place because I'm very. I've, we've got very good uh, transport around here, public transport. Yeah, but we do too. It comes... but it's just far away. <laughs> yeah, that too. But when it comes to ordering food, it's almost like they're trying to catch the fish or kill the cow or something because it takes close to like two hours or something. It's awful. Wait, are, wait, are are they delivering it like walking or something? Like, well, you'd assume so by this time. 
I don't know. I've actually never ordered food to my home ever. Because either we get takeout or we cook. And we cook, like, almost always. Like, we never choose for the takeaway option. So either... Uh, sorry, we, we, we don't never choose for the delivery option. So either we take away something... Or we eat out at a restaurant or we just cook. And I've just never seen the appeal as to why I would, like, take a restaurant meal to me and then still having to do the dishes. Mm, right, it's the yeah. worst of both worlds, if you get me. The only reason I, I would only do it if I've got comm endurance, com endurance events. Uh, so I'll definitely be eating out. I'm going to take away this weekend. But uh, it's... I don't need... When I, when I take about takeaway i don't order the takeaway stuff uh i just i i change quite a bit what i order it depends on how ill i am really because last <laughs> not last week two weeks ago i had uh ssri uh 12 hours and i did seven hours of that and then i had f1 right after it oh after jesus so i was on for about 12 hours that day uh so i just decided i'm gonna have a smoothie I'm not sure if he's bagging, I'm probably going to have it again <laughs> on Saturday for pit school six hours in the I mean, That's crazy, I could never do that. But I don't know, I feel like the main thing that I struggle with is my throat. My throat really doesn't handle it that well. Now, obviously, there's quite a big difference in like how you approach Counter-Strike compared to mm. sim racing in terms of like style and how you use your voice. Yeah. Because for this, I barely go above like talking levels in terms of volume. Mm. And whereas in CS you kind of have to bring out the energy from what's happening into the game onto the viewer but yeah. the rest of people would just say it's boring right so it's a very different approach that you have to have and my throat really hasn't been liking it that much because I tend to breathe out from my chest not from my stomach uh, for one reason and also just my voice isn't naturally like you know the best to put it nicely uh, for that kind of stuff, so I still ha I still have to find my way around, but it's not been great so far. So those longer costs, like at least we'll see if we get a break, I suppose, right between the rounds, yeah. between the games. And with sim racing, it's just I'm one go, but you never have to scream or anything. I I sometimes do, but probably exaggerating stuff, or I'm getting paid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just the mere fault of you getting paid already you know <laughs> but it's it's a good day for me yesterday was sending out invoices day my favorite day of the month oh uh, yeah I don't even have to worry about that because I have my super duper auto system what's your super duper auto system sorry I explained it to you yesterday <laughs> you might have oh no that was I that thing yeah, yeah now I remember sorry I'm a little bit slower Leave me. <laughs> no, um, I mean, I don't know if you have a registered company like I do, but I feel like that also might make a big difference. Oh, uh, no, I don't have a rig. I am. Um, one thing I was looking to do, uh, not sure if I am going to do it because it kind of defeats the purpose of me commentating, is I wanted to start an agency. Yeah, that's what I was considering doing for CS, but it's like, eh, it's not really worth it, I suppose. Yeah, it's the issue. I. Hate doing admin work, but it can admin work, organization stuff. Uh, I try to keep to a minimal because I feel like I burn myself out a lot quicker if I'm doing stuff behind the scenes instead of doing stuff that's actually relevant to the topic. Uh, it gives so, you energy as well, right? Or to be on the stream and entertaining people, so that helps. Yeah. So I created this little program uh, that I'm not sure if I'm going to send out to the public yet because it's still quite buggy. Uh, but it's basically where you put... Uh, well it's, it's quite a few things, actually. And I'm not sure how much of it is legal. <laughs> okay, well, maybe but, you shouldn't uh, explain it on the stream, then. <laughs> Just saying. You yeah, never know. It, when I mean legal, I don't mean, like, I'm going to get myself arrested for legal. I mean TOS, Discord ways. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Which is quite strict. Uh, but if I put in a YouTube... Basically, if I put in this YouTube URL in right now and I don't click the paid category, all it will do is count up the, uh, the views, likes, comments, uh, and it will keep a constant feed on it. Uh, and same with however many races I've done this year. Uh, and then at the end of the month, it will give me a data range on what uh, 
<laughs> and it basically defines my uh, ego for the month if I'm doing better on that month in terms of statistics or if I'm doing worse and it tells me what the heck uh, leads to doing better. That's all through uh, an AI based tool. Uh, and then another thing it does, if it's a paid thing, I put in the amount it's paid per rate. Uh, and then, what's it called? I only do this for a few. Like FRL, I don't do it for because games is proper good when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, but you put the stuff in, you put in the amount of money you get paid for, and at the end of the month or the uh, end of the series, depending on what you're going to be paid by. Uh, it tells you the amount and it will send an automatic message or email to that person with a PayPal link or Revolut or yeah. something like that. I mean, for me, it's pretty simple, right? I just have, like, uh, I have a couple partners that I just have set rates with. Uh, mm. Sometimes I up them, but not too much, because in the end, well, it's just going to make them frustrated. And a lot of them I also keep at lower, like, rates because I've, uh, you know, like, they have helped me a lot. So in that way, I'm kind of helping them yeah. back, right? Uh, and then, like, I normally I just ask, and this is very weird, but I like being very transparent about it. Like, I always, like, ask, like, hey, by the way, is it fine if I talk about what I'm paid? Because I feel like that's also such a, like, massive green flag if they allow you to do so. Yeah. Um, like, not, not, of course I get it as well that some people don't want to do it. Mm. But rather than setting a price, I often ask them, like, what can you, what can you pay me? And pay me isn't always necessary money also be you know like viewership um you know contacts even right because that's always those are also things that are going to help you get further right for example here i don't get paid in money that did meet a lot of people that taught me a lot about this game so therefore i have improved the quality of my broadcast which is still another equivalent of me being paid because it's gonna end up getting me multiple future offers with my expertise mm. that i have now right so for me, it's not always about it, but I always was just like, what can you pay me? And I usually, it's higher than the amount that I would dare to ask for because I find it really hard to value myself. Yeah. And there's like very little people that actually like, shh, like talk about what they're made of. Obviously these professional full-time broadcasters, right? They work with big organizations and they have set like monthly salaries rather than by hour or per map as we do it in Counter-Strike. There's one other organization that has like a website which is like their prices on it, right? Because you can hire them from it. And they charge, well, upwards to. What is it? Upwards to $50 a map, which is a lot considering a map is like, what, 30, 40 minutes maybe at max? That's like a lot. But like the thing is, they're also better than me and like more experienced than me and native English speakers. And therefore, I feel like I can't meet myself with them but I also don't want to send myself out for five euros an hour because I know I'm worth more but like valuing yourself and your service is probably the most tricky thing I've ever had to do true and it's a fear of rejection as well because you've worked this hard to actually get to the point of exception uh, just to be asked how much your fees are uh, to then be rejected for your price but that's why I actually work quite low rates compared to quite a few people on it. I'm gonna because I think I know how much you got paid uh, I'm not gonna say obviously because uh, I think you've said uh, before to me and I am actually quite a bit lower than you wait are, are, made... what, what organization are we talking about now <coughs> we're talking about FRL. FRL yeah okay yeah so I I, I mean I'm willing to give estimates because like you can look at my Fiverr page like my Fiverr page says uh, $10 per hour and that's why I know. <laughs> yeah. But I am very lenient on it, though. Like, for example, I don't really... Unless qualifying takes, like, half an hour, I don't usually, uh, like, you know, I don't usually, like, ask for money for qualifying as well. So that helps, I mm. suppose. Right? I only really charge for race time, usually. Um, which I guess I could start doing as well. But, uh, again, eh, you know, it's fine. Because in the end, I still feel myself as, like, way less experienced within sim racing than counter-strike for because for example in counter-strike i charge a lot more than i charge in sim racing because i know that's my field of expertise mm. you and ross are not having a good time by the way hitting the wall losing some grip and it looks like the battle with him and eric sparks is over for now i think yeah another thing uh because comb taught me a lot 
goal from Supercharged Motorsports because he obviously was uh, a commentator. Uh, he still is. Uh, he only commentates his league now, but he used to be uh, obviously a professional commentator as well for ACC and other racing games like that. He taught me a lot, and this is the one piece of advice that I still remember from what I'm making it sound like he's died. He's not, he's definitely still up, <laughs> still living and well. I mean, you uh, never know, he's uh, Irish, could have drank a little bit too much Guinness, <laughs> but. That's, that's very easily done. Uh, but he's, so he said this, and it's probably still one of the best things. If there's a, comp uh, a company that directs you, uh, they're in need of a commentator, so you should always pay more than if you're requesting to commentary work. So that's, that's one thing that I uh, stuck with. So that's why things like, and I'm going to say FRL, I, I do cheaper than some of these. Yep. And I have a fair bit of advice as well. Like, this might sound a little bit rude because it kind of is in a way as well. What I'm just doing, I'm just sending out the most, like, brutal, like, I don't know. It's not brutal. It's not the correct word for it. It works in Dutch, not in English. Um, it's like, I've just been sending out emails with things that I really want to do, but most likely I'm not getting to do. But I'm just mm. sending them emails like, hey, do you have a spot for this? If not, oh, that's okay too. Just let me know, right? It's like, what I I've kind of realized yeah. is that the worst thing they can say is no. Yeah, true. Like, that's the absolute worst thing. And even then they'll remember you. So if they ever need one, they're going to think, well, this guy sent an email once. We could see what he's up to. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> And that's, that's, that's how I started doing, at yeah. that's how I'm gonna start at Sanford too, most likely. Yeah. That's uh I'm gonna say one actually no I'm not. Uh <laughs> change his mind I, midway. I need to be really careful of what he's saying when it comes to this, because a few of them actually did go through. Uh which is a bit more of a surprise than I ever thought. But there are a few companies that I am quite angry with and there is a there is a tweet that I posted a few days ago that I know you saw. Uh, was that so the one you, about like not like getting, giving you security like, as to like what's happening? Yeah, yeah, just completely ghost you. Uh, it's it's just the annoying thing because at that right you don't know what's happening because. Oh, oh, I do want to say the company name, but I don't. Well, what's happening? That is Marco Lowry getting spun around there. A classic pit maneuver. Sorry to interrupt you there, but that's been multiple cars involved. Why have you seen this? P26 to P29. Anyways, I interrupted your story, so uh, go ahead. I don't know, if my ACC race control is broken. Oh, uh, yeah, that happens. Especially with the logos for GE2s, they're gone. Uh, but, yeah, it's I'm not going to name the company, even though I'm very tempted to name them. I mean, you uh, also got to stay professional, right? If you do this, then exactly. in the end, they're going to think you're a drama queen, so they don't want to deal with you, so. True, 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 true. For transparency reason, I'm for it, but for, like, logical reasons, you shouldn't. But anyways, you can tell the story without telling, like, who it is, right? So. Uh, there's a few companies that I am now working for as of now. Not sure if I say who. Uh, but there's a few as well that said, oh, yes, 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 we'd love to have you on the team. Uh, let me just quickly send you like an email doc or something on what you need uh, and then they never respond back uh, which is and then you obviously do I hate doing this but you go hey someone blah 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 sorry to bother again just wondering if there's any update and you're left on absolute blank but it's fine though it's it's fine asking for updates mm, I just hate doing it because it sounds like you're really needy it's, it sounds like you're it, it depends really because for example um if you do it like if you phrase it nicely like for example i can actually read out a message that i sent to another organization because um, i was working with them but then they uh unfortunately um what's it called they unfortunately they they weren't sure if they were going to continue it because it didn't make a lot of sense to run the the streams like uh, you know money wise mm. So, for example, they said, like, hey, uh, we're currently not sure if we're going to be continuing with them, but I'll give you an update. And then, you know, he said, like, hey, um, and then, like, he said, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know within a week. And then, like, a, a week and a day after, I was like, hey, do you have any updates for me yet? You know, 
Uh, I'm mm. not trying to push you into making a decision, but at the end, I also need to know what my options are so I can see if I need to reserve the time or not, right? And like, in my opinion, if you do it like that, it's always going to be fine because they should also realize that, you know, you're not their slave, right? In the end, you are trying to help them and they're trying to help you. They're compensating you for what you, what you do. They can't expect you to just like be reserving your time that you could be spending like working for somebody else, right? Um, so for me, it's kind of been a difficult balance between those two. And honestly, I think these subjects are really interesting to talk about. So maybe we could start a podcast or something about this or just, ha just talk about it. Well. <laughs> Cause, uh, Another is there an esports like based podcast? Like, is, is that much of a thing? Ludwig. Uh, I'm not sure if you know who he is. Yeah, he the, the, the streamer? Yeah, he is one, well, I believe. Yeah, because for example, we've got a uh, guy, I believe it's, it's, I don't know, it's like an eSports in the Benelux region podcast, for example, run. Which is kind of cool. But we I'm not sure if that's a podcast. A... Yeah, I mean, what, what do we call it then? we got to figure out a no, name. Kilm's got his own podcast, so we could just have to... Yeah, commentators. Yeah, I mean, we could, yeah, it could work. Cost is right. Uh, brilliant. That's a good one, actually, Mal. Yeah, that could work. Right, man. That would be interesting as well, because I feel like I am in two very different worlds, so my POV is interesting from either of them, because they're so different, right? Because yeah. you definitely notice, and this is not to, like, uh, discredit anybody in the sim racing community, and that's also not, my views are also not representative of the entire community, but what I notice as well is, maybe it's because I work with bigger organization in Counter-Strike than I work with in sim racing, but what I've noticed is that these three, like, the, 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 communication and stuff has just been so much better with the Counter-Strike people, generally speaking. Yeah. But there are also people that do it full-time. I understand that. But it's it just seems more consistent, at least. Not necessarily faster, because, for example, the lads at FRL, they always respond within my DMs. Like, they always respond, like, within a couple hours, basically. No matter when I send them a message, as long as it's, like, yeah. within reasonable times, right? And, like, it's just been a very pleasant experience with them. But I've also had, like, other organizations I've talked to. And it's like, you know, you get a message once a week. And I'm like, dude, I can't do anything with this, you know? I think another limitation that I know I definitely have, I don't think you'll have at all. Uh, and this is why you don't see many young commentators anymore, is age limitations. I would have had probably twice the amount of uh, commentary work I would have had if it wasn't for my age. There he goes, Matthew Hello. Gamble across the finish line. Sorry to interrupt there. Tom Wegman in second place, and then Michael Syme right behind. So now it's just a matter of waiting for David Hill to come in. Sorry to interrupt you there, but obviously there is a race oh, finishing a race about this now. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a race too. We forgot about that. Yeah, no, but the age thing, I don't know. I feel like it's a maturity thing. But then again, you've also got to think about it. Like your portfolio is so big already, and you're only 15, right? Like for I'm me, not trying to get where you go up there. <laughs> no, no, but listen. For example, like if you think about it this way, in sim racing, you've got way more experience than me. Obviously, and you're only 15, right? If you have basically six more years to build up, and you'll most likely be in a better position than I ever was, because I started very late, right? Now, obviously, I had the luck that I had some contacts here, uh, here and there. Shama Kowalski. Great job on finishing first in the GT2 class, though. Gotta admit it, that was pretty good. But, yeah, it's just been, like... I don't know how to say this properly, but... It's just been, like, a great opportunity for me. Can you imagine how big this is for you, right? Because I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we're going to see you at BRSCC or any other big amateur racing league where you can get started in IRL racing. And from there... I am like 90% sure it's just going to be like a snowball effect, right? Where it's just going to get bigger and better every single time. That's everybody across the line. And so just to recite the top 10 here, we've got Afi Gamble, Michael Syme, David Hill, Dario Sugaro, uh, Tommaso Bocci, uh, Shema Kowalski, Dan Pickles, Rigatti, Stefan Wilson, and Chris Tedder to round out our top 10. Oh, it's only my camera, of course. Feel... Got to put that. <laughs> What you say, I, haven't been looking, I haven't been looking at chat, so... <laughs> Me neither. Um, uh, good to see you, Momo. There's still 10 people watching in this. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Every time man. I did it, you got it. So I think it's easier for yeah. younger cast to build a resume because I never had the um, esports opportunity at the edge. Exactly as well.
that's that's the main thing, right? Esports is still a very growing scene. Can you imagine how it is for people starting off five years later than five years later than us? Oh, a hundred percent. Especially with the uh the more brands coming in, because obviously there's some negative brands I'm not gonna name. Phase <laughs> dot dot dot, uh, and people like that, especially coming into the sim racing community, that are destroying postponers. Uh, not for a good thing. Uh, but just brands like that just don't, but they're amazing. Well, they used to be amazing phase and then they decided to make their entire thing into a NFT slash stock. Uh, but they used to be amazing in black ops. Uh, they were CS go for a while as well. Then they were obviously Fortnite stuff like they were absolutely amazing. And I watched them quite a bit, especially with, there was like one very young kid of face high sky. who joined yeah, up. Was crazy. it? 11 or so and he's he's he made millions and he's probably been able to retire by his age already yeah it's crazy it, but like i don't know face has always been kind of a scummy org- organization they've had so many dramas yeah. so then again like they're still one of the biggest household names in esports which is also the issue because that obviously hurts the brand a lot right it's also probably very a lot of pressure to actually be able to stay on the top step while also keeping a good postponer yeah, well, I'm most definitely not able to do so, unfortunately. But anyways, lads, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Do you have any final words before I can finally go to sleep? <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, you probably don't actually. Most of you probably haven't heard of my voice for quite a while, but it's good to be back on the Amigos scene for as long as I can be on it. And it's a pleasure to be alongside you once again, Rick Key. Rick Key. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot there's a Y on the end of your name. I mean, I, officially it's Rick anyways, but I just go by um, Ricky because it just sounds so much better, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, I get that. It's just, I don't know, it just doesn't work the other way, at least in my opinion. I just don't like the way Rick sounds in English, but yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I, don't, it, it, I don't know, for you, Alex, I feel like it's just, I mean, it's a name that fits in English way better, right? I don't know, I'm just yeah, not a fan of it. it's an English it. name. Yeah, no, exactly. Right, it's just, it sounds so much better. Uh, Rick in English, to me, it's just never worked. Yeah. Anyways, lads, I want to thank you guys all for watching. It's time for me to mute Discord and then play some music and it's time to go to sleep. Thank you guys all for joining as always. Uh, thank you for to Alex for being by my side. And I wish you guys all a very pleasant evening. So, till then. When you call but phone and there's no one you could call, I'll be there, I'll be there. When you face your mistakes, no, you don't have what it takes, I'll be there, and I'm a taker. Take you to a place, mix new colors, but no shades.